At the turn of the 1980s, the deprivation and desperation felt as South Yorkshire's industries went into freefall was captured in a series of remarkable photographs. Now the work of Martin Jenkinson, steel worker turned photographer, is the subject of a major exhibition in Sheffield. And Lucy Hester has been looking at the stories behind the photographs. Martin Jenkinson had a knack for making the mundane memorable. For more than 30 years, the photojournalist chronicled everyday life as he saw it on the streets of Sheffield, his adopted city. And he captured some of the best known images of the British industrial struggle. Now, the first major retrospective of his work is on display at Sheffield's Western Park Museum and it's an extraordinary collection. Martin Jenkinson didn't set out to be a photographer. He was a steel worker, but he was made redundant when the industry began to decline, and he turned to his hobby to pay the bills. It was the late 70s, and there was just something about Jenkinson's images, perfectly framed shots that each told a story. He was really capturing Sheffield at the point it was changing, so the industry that had been the mainstay of the city for so long was in decline, and he was really trying to show that um, through his photographs. This picture of a steelworks was taken in 1981, and this just a year later, in 1982. He never had any formal training, but he clearly has this real natural talent for um, finding the photograph, framing it perfectly, um, and just capturing that moment. This is not a war zone. It is children playing in the rubble of demolished houses in Darnall, in Sheffield. Jenkinson's acutely observed photos show the end of an era, the last of the old guard. Factory workers relaxed on a break. Within a few years, most of their workplaces would be closed for good and smiling tentatively through the changes. Maxine Duffus, back in 1982, South Yorkshire's first black female bus driver. I was still in the driving school, because we had just passed. Back in the 80s, there were a few women drivers, but not young ones and not black ones. So I think that was the hype. Jenkinson's picture of Maxine caused a bit of a stir and made headlines on the local front pages back in 1982. I just became a bit overwhelmed, but I think I'm more overwhelmed now. <laughs> Is that really me there? The wheel looks really big. I think that might have been what was daunting as well, do you know, because I was so young. And the people that got on the buses, they were a lot of, well, they were obviously older than me, so they were thinking probably can she do it. I did hear that sometimes. Is she going to be able to take us there? Mm. 37 years on, Maxine doesn't drive buses anymore, but she still remembers the day Martin Jenkinson came to take her photograph. From what I remember, just very calm and he did put me at my ease, do you know, from what I remember, because he would have said, I'm just going to take this Maxine, just pretend I'm not here, just, I'm just going to take the picture. Justine Jenkinson recognises that description of her dad. She runs his archive these days, over 20,000 photographs, and they're still in demand. You could tell sometimes he was really looking forward to a job, you know, he was in a good mood. But no, he always enjoyed taking photos and liking trying to do things from a different angle, you know. I know it's my dad, but they are good. His work was, I, I've realised how important it was. And, and, and it makes me really proud to get it out there see all the different various jobs and different types of work. From Jenkinson's huge body of work, the museum chose just 80 images for its exhibition. Oh, okay. Even once we'd worked out what themes we wanted, Justine would appear with another box that she'd found. I think we really felt that we wanted to do Martin's work justice and we wanted to look at everything to make sure that we hadn't missed this really corking image that should have been in the exhibition. Um, but we got there eventually. <laughs> at the heart of the exhibition, his classic images of South Yorkshire's industrial struggle. The miners' strike of 1984. As the NUM's photographer, 
he got closer to the running battles than most. Arthur Scargill's arrest on the picket line. With an unflinching eye, Martin chronicled it all, and the hardship and the humanity that went with it. And sometimes Jenkinson went even further than that. This image is a moment, a hiatus, in the midst of all that bitter confrontation and anger, and it shows the miners' strike in all its complexities. It was the day that would be called the Battle of Orgreave. The police have identifying numbers removed in anticipation of trouble. The miner is wearing a toy helmet, a hint of humour in a highly charged situation. The miner was George Breeley, who died several years ago, but his friend and fellow miner remembers the day clearly. We were all herded down onto, a, onto the field. So we were marshalled, really, in a way. First thing you saw were the lines of police, and you're thinking, wow, what's happening here? The police numbers grew and grew, and then you look to the left, you saw dogs, you look to the right, you saw police, and you're thinking, there's something extraordinary going to happen today. And what tactics was, wherever there were a police line in depth, they had a snatch squad behind. George went through, and we thought, oh, what's he doing now? He'll disappear soon. I think the only thing I could put it down to, he totally disarmed him. Me, you know, he had a smile on his face. Very smart turnout, the blazer, the badge, the policeman's hat on. And I think he got away with it that day because he absolutely just disarmed him. It was a moment of humour that would be swiftly overtaken by what was one of the most violent confrontations of the strike. Now, this is Martin's contact sheet from that day, images taken directly from his negatives, and it shows very clearly the series of pictures that he took over the space of just a few seconds. It tells the story of an extraordinary exchange. Both men are smiling broadly. They were talking about cricket. It was one moment, wasn't it? In, in the yeah, one moment. I showed the images to Frank. One smile out of thousands and thousands of them. So, George did well. <laughs> this exhibition is a window on South Yorkshire's recent turbulent past. Martin Jenkinson died in 2012, but he left behind him a comprehensive archive, a moving and affectionate portrait of the area and its people. I don't think he'd realise that he'd have like this reaction to the exhibition, you know. I don't think he'd have to take it in. He was taking photos, something he enjoyed, but also he was capturing something he really believed in. I don't think he'd know how proud and how well thought of he was. That's all from here in Swaledale, but make sure you join us next week. And we'll be visiting what's claimed to be the UK's first zero carbon housing estate. We find out how many mobility aids are lying unclaimed and is it possible to save enough to retire at 40?